Diversity could be a number game, but inclusion a mindset. Let me share with you the 23 years of my journey through diversity and inclusion. One of the stories that I vividly remember dates back to 2007 when we were coming up with a block in the central campus in our Bengaluru. The leader at that time took a provocatively inspiring move. He began constructing facilities for the laborers. I asked him, Father, why are we doing this? This is not an established practice in the industry or in the education world. He replied, young man, you want laborers coming to the, your premises, working for you full time, surrendering their soul for the work, but where will they keep their children? And when the children come to the premises, you become alleged. He continued saying that diversity and inclusion have to be baked into the very DNA of an organization. This would very well resonate with the idea that Indira Nooyi discusses in her book, My Life in Full. In one of her interviews with Harvard Business Review on the new world of work, Nooyi says that we have to approach problems with an eye towards solution. Diversity and inclusion becoming the very core of an organization. And she says, this is what has made her ascend to the top of iconic Pepsi and do all that she could do. This is similar in the case of Ginny Ramati, who became the chairman of IBM, coming from a humble background when her father left her and mother and other three siblings she says, it is the society which was inclusive and diverse that helped her reach the potentials. India ranked 135 among the 146 countries in the Global Gender Gap Index. And India has only 22.4% of its women workforce vis-a-vis -vis the world average of 47%. We need to help women entrepreneurs. We need to initiate banks to give them loans, just like in the case of microfinancing, which Muhammad Yunus did in the case of Bangladesh. Diversity and inclusion has to be ingrained at the very core of educational institutions. I have immensely benefit of this diversity and inclusion in my past profile as a PRO and related issues. Whenever we went to offices in Bangalore and throughout the country, it is the diversity and the inclusive mindset that the officials possess. And also they said that this is an institution which has promise for the future, and educational institutions at large do this. Therefore, let us help them. At this point, I remember the story of the birth of Off Campus. It was an election year, and in 2019, inspection happened, and we had to get the, get the approval from the ministry. But the model code of conduct was in force, and the election commission will not clear it. Father Josie and myself, we were at crossroads, not knowing what to do, how to pull this file at that time. Again, the commission interpreted it as educational institutions where they are involved in a transformative journey. Let us help them. They will bring in diversity and inclusion and the file was cleared. What a crucible, exhilarating moment for all of us. DEI dates back to 1960s 
to the civil rights movement of the United States of America. Bishop Barron, who speaks on word on fire, tells diversity, equity, inclusion have become synonymous to equality, fraternity, and liberty of the French Revolution. But he cautions on one thing, that these should not become absolute principles or absolute fundamental values. Rather, they exist in relationship with other values, in measure with other values, universal values like justice and love, where he explains love is to will the good of others as they are. And I think if universities foster this type of a culture, we will not be witnessing issues that are happening in the national and the international arena. Now, institutions also can imitate practices that are in the industry to foster inclusion and diversity, like appointing people with cerebral palsy and Down syndrome, bringing them also to work where the work is not highly demanding to do regular, routine, repetitive jobs, they can be brought into it. Another issue that our country faces or our educational institutions face is, especially in the case of premier institutions, where students make it to the institution with reservation but they are not able to cope with the system because of the nuance issues. There is no hand-holding happening there. If that happens, they too will merge and get transformed in the whole process. The Companies Act of 2013 mandates that companies of certain classes should have a woman member on the board. This allows them to bring diversity and inclusion to the board. But again, they caution, it is not just to have a woman member for the namesake, but to have them with a purpose. Supposing you are discussing on a China issue, you appoint a woman member who is expert in that field. That's how you bring in diversity and inclusion to the board. And companies which are flouting this are also getting penalized. I think more and more companies would come forward and appoint more women members on board. Now, how can universities actually foster diversity and inclusion in the campuses? A renowned Harvard professor, Sudel Neely, talks about having a global culture, embodying a global culture. How do you do that? You need to transcend beyond the immediate reality, rub off the preconceived notions that we have, and embody a commonality. She says, many of the problems that are there are arising out of the self-sabotaging beliefs and behaviors that we possess. Once we are able to conquer universities become a place of diversity and inclusion. Another area where leaders can focus is leaders have to consciously include diversity and inclusion into the affairs of university. As I told you earlier, all the officials and the whole machinery helping institutions because they are the citadels of diversity, inclusion, where people come together, they transform and transfigure themselves and in the whole exercise, the society too. So inclusive leaders consider inclusive leadership not just as a process of the HR department, but everybody in the organization. It percolates from the top to bottom, and everybody becomes a participant in that whole exercise because 
It is something that is consciously ingrained into the DNA of the organization. And it is not being nice with people. It is not easy going. But it calls for action. It calls for ingenuity of leaders. It calls for leaders actively getting involved. And I'm sure once that happens, as my mentor used to say, universities become places where holistic diversity is celebrated. I have seen in my own institutions, in my own life, where people come from humble vernacular background, actualizing their potentials because they get that opportunity and learning a relatively permanent change in the behavior of individuals happens when these type of things are incorporated. Thank you.